Flying panel. Yes. Let's start with basics. What is role playing? <laughs> role playing is basically just um, you uh, is basically forming a narrative with a group of other people and using your imagination to do so. And that should be the most important thing. Remember that your goal when playing a role-playing game is not to win, it's mostly to create a story. Yes, in like some tabletop games, you can objectively win through like min-maxing stats, but those games just tend to be a bit hollow in my opinion. Uh, and like the true games come from the story that develops between the characters. There's some important things to remember about uh, pony role-playing. First, remember that ponies have no thumbs. I see this in a lot of uh, uh, pony role-plays. Uh, people forget that ponies do not have thumbs. This, for instance, is a pony attempting to use a bow and arrow in G1 with the help of several humans. Ponies cannot really use bow and arrows that well or really swords. And you have to be creative. That's one thing I kind of like the, uh, I'll get to actually in a second. Uh, if you look at the show itself, most pony weapons uh, tend to be pole arms, uh, which are uh, held in the crook of the, uh, uh, in the crook of the leg or mounted on a saddle type device. And searching elsewhere, we also have uh, some swords in um, My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. We have them attached to the hoof. Uh, they seem to be attached. Uh, G1, we have like some normal style swords. And also we have ponies uh, using their mouths to operate swords in also G1 as well. Uh, swords for, partic uh, are a particular challenge to uh, ponies because, well... Again, no thumbs. It's kind of hard to operate a sword when you're trying to do... Yeah. That's not going to work very well. And a lot of uh, pony role points uh, seem to incorporate guns. I kind of like the way that uh, my old pony friendship is... Um, sorry. <laughs> Uh, the uh, Fallout Equestria fan for Candle Zone. But first, uh, historically, there is a historical type gun that you can use uh, for ponies that actually works kind of like a pole arm, the uh, hand cannon, uh, which is basically a cannon attached to a pole arm. And also from uh, the uh, Fallout Equestria, uh, fanfic where actually a lot of thought was put into how ponies would use guns and other weapons. Uh, mouth triggers. And also here's a spectacular design by Keyframe, uh, which uh, is also another type of mouth trigger. And a completely different design gun than when humans would use it. And here's another type, a sniper rifle mounted to a saddle which uses a uh, tail ring to pull the trigger. With characters, the important thing is to be interesting. Um, yeah, this is a kid's design, and your, role, and your characters should not be like this kid's design, which is basically an alicorn who's all perfect, royal, etc. Uh, characters are best when they are interesting. They should have like a fatal flaw, uh, and cutie. And remember, cutie marks should have multiple meanings that actually produces good uh, role point elements, such as like a hidden meaning, like. Let's say it's a crescent moon, and it can be interpreted a couple of different ways. Like maybe the character, like, uh, boy, she's a night owl, but actually she should be a member of the lunar guard. That type of thing. Your characters. This is an important thing that applies to all role playing games. When you create a character, think of an overarching goal for your character. Does anyone have any overarching goals in that for their role playing characters? Like, why is your character going on this adventure? 
Why is your character acting this behave, acting this? Do they want to become like powerful? Do they want to become like? Well, of course, powerful is also just a step. Why do they want to become powerful? Do they want to uh, like prove themselves better? Do they want to avenge something that happened in their use? Were they do they um, want to get revenge on some pegasi who abused them when they were younger and boyed them? Boredom. What? Boredom. Yes, boredom also works, but only to a degree. After they've had the adventure and stuff, what else are they planning to do? Who are like uh, an, an anti-villain who's doing villainous actions for uh, good means, like. Let's take uh, Red Eye. Red Eye in Fallout Equestria. Um, he's like a big example of a uh, uh, anti-villain. He's enslaving tons of ponies, uh, working them to death, but he's also doing it for the purpose of rebuilding Equestria. He's restarting schools and basically trying to build something good on the back of tons of basically evil actions. Okay, and also I'd like to begin talking about various forms of role playing. First, free form, um, the importance of being a jabroni. You should know, and free, since free form has no rules, if your characters come to heads with another character, you should know when to fail. Your character should not be 100% the best at all times. This is an important thing I see a lot of people uh, fail at. Like, my character is the best, and uh, like they have this special thing, and they can never fail at that, and they're royalty, and uh, they're all powerful. They would never lose a fight. Again, that's another thing to look out for, and like knowing when to be a jabroni kind of also helps at that, uh, because basically you kind of want to use, like, to like, like handicap yourself if you're going like too far. One thing that we've done in like a uh, role playing uh, community that I've been in is occasionally use uh, dice to determine our successes of various uh, of various tasks. And oh. It's just a pun. Uh, it comes from professional wrestling. A jobber is somebody who goes out and loses on purpose. Basically to help another character along or basically to like keep the flow of the narrative. Pro wrestling is actually a good uh, thing to compare freeform role playing to because they have like have like a general of idea of how the stories are supposed to go and then it, the matches are kind of like free form they uh, do their moves and like react but there's a set ending and they know when they fail like if you're playing a villain character uh, normally you you're supposed to lose so that's an important thing to remember if you're playing a villainous character at time, avoid the feeling that you have to win at all times, because then it's not helpful or fun for the other players involved. Uh, also, another thing to use is universals, like say, Pathfinder. This is actually a Kickstarter from Silver Games uh, where they incorporated some rules and added in pony races to Pathfinder. Uh, D20 is actually a very useful uh, system in this regard, although personally I'm not too fond of D20 because it's very combat heavy, uh, but D20 also has a lot of other things which can be mixed with it, like say possibly Exodus. Uh, we also have groups, which is a general uh, universal role-playing system. Uh, we have things like Quags that are from Hex Games, and there's actually a system they've made themselves called Laser Ponies. Uh, 
Quags is a very simple dice uh, system, and also from time to time, the various characters also get candy, which they can use to bribe the GM. So that's actually a good system if you want to um, <laughs> help your friend read GM by giving them candy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and also, uh, Back in 2006, Wizards of the Coast, uh, which is also owned by Hasbro and does D&D, did a uh, April Fool's joke uh, where they uh, promote a My Little Pony role-playing game. And in their uh, editor's note the next day, they said, well, wait a minute, this is starting to sound a bit too reasonable. Somebody might read this and decide we should start making a My Little Pony RPG, and that's what we, not what we want for April Fool's. They went on saying about uh, how My Little Pony incorporated adventure and would be a good way to like, introduce younger kids to uh, role-playing and the use of dice and the basic mechanics of role-playing. Here's also uh, Laser Ponies. Also, there's a ton of fan-created role-playing systems. Uh, some examples are Ponytails, Aspiration of Harmony. There's another Ponytails, which is D6 Space. Uh, My Little Pony, the role-playing game by Tim C. C. Hughes. Uh, Savage World of My Little Pony, which incorporates Savage World. Uh, My Little Pony, Unknown Ponies. Don't Rest Your Hooves, Ponies, the RPG. Pony Wars, which is actually weirdly a G3 war game-based system. Ponies and Paris Brights, Fallout Equestria, the pen and paper uh, game. And the uh, Fallout Equestria pen and paper uh, game is actually very interesting because uh, Kat, who, uh, got, who was a writer of the, of the Fallout Equestria fanfic, actually got involved, uh, revised the original rule set, and also added new lore, and also has been running campaigns. We also have Roll a Pony and a few other systems. Anyone uh, out in the audience uh, use any of these, use any of these uh, uh, fan systems or universal systems? Um, basically, just Google it. It's insane how many different uh, systems people have created. Yeah. Um, uh, there's also uh, the My Little uh, My Little Pony Rollpoint is Magic, which is also a uh, big system. You can find it at Rollpoint is, just Google Rollpoint is Magic, and it has its own system as well, which is also another popular one. Uh, where to play? Hey. How's it going? <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Nick, everyone. As to where to pray, of course, uh, there's uh, email, chat rooms, forums, uh, in person, and also Facebook. I would caution about Facebook as well. There was a user who I somewhat know on Facebook who had some issues in the past with uh, somebody trying to find out her personal information through uh, uh, for things that she had posted, including uh, pictures of her laptop and identifying the and trying to identify on her campus to, who it was through a sp specific uh, spot on her laptop, which is actually somewhat prevalent among some weird people online. Like, if does anyone know uh, the uh, video reviewer Nerd Cubed? Yeah. He actually went down for like a week or so after he got weirded out by a fan who figured out where he lived in London by a quick six second shot which showed outside his window. They managed to track down his apartment after, after figuring out where his apartment was from the quick look out the window and then found his apartment itself by identifying a stain that was seen in the hallway 
<laughs> outside his door and knocked on his door and it weirded him out and he like disappeared from the internet for a couple of weeks before explaining what happened and posting a video on it and telling people never to do that. Because it, of course weirds people out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyone have any problems with that? What's like creepy people online? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, getting the strain back on the uh, track. Uh, the, there's also the issue of settings. Should the uh, show's issues be, uh, I mean, should the, uh, as the show continues, uh, certain things get laid down, such as like Twilight becoming an alicorn and all, and various things happen. When you're creating your RPG campaign, you should figure out whether you want to keep the sh keep the RP canon to what's happening to the show or not, or like picking an event because like sometimes things might happen, such as let's say they're going after this particular thing, and like uh, let's say they're going after a after let's say they're going to like this whole thing involving Daring Do. And it turns out that Daring Do is very different from uh, how she is in, uh, like, the, uh, uh, the later Daring Don't episode. You were saying? Uh, that's actually when you out, act out of character as a uh, uh, role player. This is talking about show issues itself. Yes? Uh, okay, I should distinguish between uh, role plays that are involving a canon character and ones which are not uh, involving canon characters, which I should have uh, ran into first. First, there's pros and cons of dealing with the canon characters. First, they're recognizable, and but also they tend to be hemmed in with the show. Uh, uh, basically... Uh, if you're uh, doing all an OOC campaign, you run into what uh, Spoonie called the Vader problem. Ca the players will want to mess with the uh, main show characters. Like, they want to hang out with Pinkie Pie, or like, run off and do things with Pinkie Pie, or like, uh, Nightmare, or like, King Sombra appears and they instantly want to destroy Sombra or do something which uh, is probably not the best thing that would keep things in line was like the show's thing. Like maybe like <laughs> maybe like Luna becomes evil again and they decide to like drop an entire castle on her or something. You can also use like the avoidance trick. Uh, for dealing with like canon characters, such as they're busy elsewhere, or like if there's like your characters are dealing with a uh, emergency which is involving all of Equestria, why aren't the main six involved? Why isn't Celestia involved? <laughs> it's true. Maybe you're too, there's too little time, or the characters are the only ones qualified. Or maybe here's another. Um, Here's another solution to it. Maybe your characters, maybe it's a parallel universe where your characters are the main six instead of the original main six. Anyone do anything of that sort? Oh. <laughs> Anyone uh, set their um, uh, campaigns in a uh, alternate universe, in alternate universe, uh, Equestria? No? Yes? Oh, that works, but something more closer to actual Equestria. Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Another thing you could do is also with uh, 
alternate universes, like maybe the characters act very differently or have different motivations, which foil show pre knowledge, such as like maybe if you're uh, like doing a campaign based on the Crystal Empire, maybe Sombra acted uh, was doing it for a different reason, and your main six was uh, doing it that way, or maybe the Crystal Heart isn't what defeats him. That way, they get thrown off by trying to use their show knowledge instead of what they can, their characters actually learn. And of course, there's other universes as well and other sayings, like, uh, like say, Fallout Equestria and other generations like uh, G1, which is pretty scary. No. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, there's... Uh, on forums, we have the uh, Ohio Bronies forum, which has some light role playing going on on it. Um, other possibilities, you could do fusions like Doctor Who's, a Torchwood, uh, maybe X Files. Maybe you could mix in the Cthulhu mixos in your pony RPs. Maybe some cyberpunk. <laughs> 